Today on MTG Unpacked, we're going to crack open the Commander 2018 deck Adaptive Enchantment. So this one is all about enchantments and themes like that. And as you can see, we have another Planeswalker Commander. And let's take a look at the back here. So talking about Commander as a multiplayer format, we have a couple of examples of cards. And talking about the Planeswalker, Estrid wears many faces only occasionally wearing her own. Her arsenal of enchanted masks lets her shift seamlessly between the powers and fighting styles of countless creatures to adapt to enemy tactics. So we get a deck box, 100 card deck, actually have 17 new cards here, 10 double sided token cards, and of course the foil oversized card and some inserts, and I have some Planeswalkers here to represent the colours. So this is the Bant colour combination. That's green, white, blue. So without any further ado, let's get stuck into this. One thing I did forget to mention in the last video, the price of these has actually gone up. So they're not quite as good a deal as they once were. Retail I think is like $40. I got them a bit cheaper. It was 140 for all four, but that was a pre-order price, so your mileage may vary. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to make a decision about these. They're not as cheap as they used to be. Okay, so let's take a look. These foil oversized cards are always cool. So we get Estrid the Mask, Legendary Planeswalker Estrid for four mana. You can see the Bant color combination there. Three loyalty, uh, plus two is untap each enchanted permanent you control. Minus one is create a white aura enchantment token named Mask attached to another target permanent. The token has enchant permanent and totem armor. Whatever that means. If you know about that, leave a note in the comments. And minus seven. Put the top seven cards of your library into your graveyard. Return all non-aura enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then do the same for aura cards. Uh, Estrid the Mask can be your commander. So that's the notation they're using on the cards to indicate that yes, this particular Planeswalker can be a commander. They can't always be commanders, but they do have this adaptation for some of these new cards. Okay, so we get a deck box here. The deck, of course. Let's take a look at the insert. So this tells you about playing the deck. It's all about playing enchantments, funnily enough. So you have protective enchantments and attacking with huge creatures. And there's also, I guess, another uh, Commander, this would be Kestia the Cultivator, and Tuvasa the Sunlit. So we'll take a look at those shortly. Some rules of Commander, which we went through before. You can freeze frame that if you would like to take a closer look. And on the back here, we have a look at the main players. So we have Estrid, Kestia, Tuvasa, and what is this? A uh, Rick Smith is Slumbering Isle. Oh, it's a Kraken. Ah, so they, you think it's an island. Yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll check that out as well. Alright, so set this stuff aside. Then we crack open the main deck here. Let's get stuck into this. Split it apart. So I'm going to split apart the lands here. Uh, starting about here. And the cards going everywhere, as usual. Tons of lands. Alright, set those aside. And then there's bound to be some tokens in here. So I will sort those out. Let's put our commanders aside. Okay, so tokens, cut the deck, it's a little bit unwieldy to go through the whole thing at once. Okay, so 
Here we have a regular size Estrid the Masked. So this is one you can sleeve up. The big ones are a little bit unwieldy, but they are definitely fun to play with. You have these huge cards everywhere. So that is pretty much the same as the large card. Next up we have another foil. This is Kestia the Cultivator, 4-4 four, four, for 4 mana. Again, Bant Colors. Legendary Enchantment Creature, Nymph. Has a Bestow ability, so 3 and a Forest Plains and Island. If you cast this card for its... Oh, not Enchantment cost. Bestow cost, it's an Aura spell with Enchant Creature. It becomes a creature again if it's not attached to a creature. Enchanted creature gets plus four, plus four, and whenever an enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control attacks, draw a card. So you're either pumping up an existing creature with this one, it becomes an enchantment, or you're using it as a creature, that seems pretty cool. Then we have Tuvasa the Sunlit, legendary creature, Merfolk Shaman. So if you're into tribal Merfolk, this would be a good one to pick up. 1-1 one, one for 3 mana, gets plus 1 plus 1 for each enchantment you control, and whenever you cast your first enchantment spell each turn, draw a card. Seems like a good deal. And then we're moving on to the main deck here. I'm not going to read out all of the commons and uncommons, however we will spend a little bit of time on the rares and mythics. So let's see if we can get some focus here. We start off with a Loyal Unicorn, a Loyal Drake, a Loyal Guardian. We have a lot of Loyal Creatures here. Dismantling Blow, Sage's Reverie, Soul Snare. I think that one's worth a couple of bucks, or it used to be. Unquestioned Authority, Archetype of Imagination. Eel Umbra, so you'll notice a lot of these have the enchantment auras for beefing up creatures and giving them special abilities. Vow of Flight, so giving your creature plus two plus two flying and can't attack you or planeswalker you control in case somebody turns your creatures against you. Whitewater Naiads, Aura Narlid, <laughs> sort of a strange beast. Uh, Bear-like thing, not quite sure how you can describe that guy. Dawn's Reflection, Fertile Ground, Crufix's Insight, that one reminds me, Born of the Gods, that block. <coughs> Theros block, actually. Overgrowth, Reclamation Sage, Snake Umbra, Vow of Wildness, Wild Growth, so this one you can enchant your land, that's interesting. Yavamaya Enchantress, let's get some focus here. Bant Charm, Unflinching Courage, and who could forget the Soul Ring? Add two colorless mana when you tap it, and a random planes, or we'll just oh, a couple of planes. Okay, I don't know why that happens, but they just chuck them in the middle there, so we'll put those aside. Now we have a rare, Imperial Storm Sorcery, or Imperial Storm, however you say that. This one is 6 mana. When you cast a spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game, and you can create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. So potentially getting a whole bunch of those if you've moved your commander from the command zone multiple times. Heavenly Blade Master Creature Angel, 3-6 for 6 mana with flying and double strike. Seems decent. When Heavenly Blade Master enters the battlefield you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to it. Other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 for each aura and equipment attached to Heavenly Blade Master. So that could get out of control pretty quickly. Next up we have Estrid's Invocation Enchantment for 3. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any enchantment you control, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. You may exile this enchantment. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. 
Ever watching Threshold, another enchantment for three. Whenever an opponent attacks you and or a Planeswalker you control with one or more creatures, draw a card. Octopus Umbra. Okay, enchantment aura for five, enchant creature, and you can give it base power and toughness eight, eight, and has whenever this creature attacks you may tap target creature with power eight or less. Here we go. I was wondering about this totem armor. If enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. So you're basically, it's becoming an armor, you're destroying it, a creature is still alive, not taking damage. Seems pretty good. Genesis Storm, sorcery for six. When you cast a spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. You may put that card onto the battlefield, then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield on the bottom of your library in a random order. So that is a mouthful. Myth Unbound. So this enchantment looks interesting. We've got some lands in the background for three mana. Your commander costs one less to cast for each time it's being cast from the command zone this game. That's a good deal. Reducing that command attacks. Whenever your commander is put into the command zone from anywhere, draw a card. So you get some card draw as well. Fantastic. I would say that's a good one to add to a green deck. Next we have an out of focus. Nylea's Colossus. Uh, this is a 6-6 six, six for 7 mana enchantment creature giant. It has the Constellation ability, so whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, double target creatures, power and toughness until end of turn. That seems fantastic. Moving right along. What else do we have here? We have a Ravenous Slime. So this is a creature ooze, 1-1 one, one for 3 mana. Can't be blocked by creatures of power 2 or less. And some crazy stuff going on there. If a creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile it and put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to that creature's power on Ravenous Slime. So I like the mechanic fits in with the artwork. You're pumping up this guy when their creatures get exiled. That's pretty good. And here he is, legendary creature Kraken. Arex Methes, Slumbering Isle, 12-12, holy cow, for 4 mana, enters battlefield tapped with 5 slumber counters on it, and as long as it has the slumber counter on it, it's a land. Whenever you cast a spell, you may remove a slumber counter from Arex Methes, so you can tap it for forest or islands, and watch out if those slumber counters disappear, this could be a nice game wrecking card. That's another good addition to Commander decks with that color combo. Hydra Omnivore. So this is a mythic! 8-8, eight, eight, 4, 6 mana. Whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. Another good deal there. Bruna Light of Alabaster. This is a, another cool mythic. 5-5 five, five for 6 mana with Flying and Vigilance, and whenever it attacks or blocks, you may attach to it any number of auras on the battlefield, and you may put onto the battlefield attached to it any number of aura cards that could enchant it from your graveyard and or hand. That seems fantastic. Sucking up those auras from all over the place. Next up we have Ajani's Chosen, so this is one for you cat tribal fans out there. Cat Soldier 3-3 three, three for 4 mana. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 two, two white cat creature token. And if that enchantment's an aura, you may attach it to the token. Celestial Archon and encri <laughs> Enchantment Creature. Slow down! 4-4 four, four for 5 mana has Bestow for 5 and 2 planes, so you cast it for its bestow cost, it's an aura spell with enchant creature if oh it becomes a creature again if it's not attached to a creature. As flying and first strike, enchanted creature gets plus four plus four and has flying and first strike. So take your 
pick there, use it as an aura or use it as a creature. Then we have Martial Coup, sorcery for X and two planes. Create X11 white soldier creature tokens if X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Phyrexian Rebirth, what? That is craziness. Sorcery for six, destroy all creatures and create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. <laughs> that seems like a good one. Sigil of the Empty Throne, another rare enchantment for five. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Silent Sentinel, this is another Ar Archon, 4-6 for four, seven mana with flying. Whenever it attacks, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Winds of Wrath. Sorcery for five, destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted, they can't be regenerated. And that is what you end up with at the end, an out of focus boneyard. Okay, Dictate of Crufix, enchantment for three, with flash at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. We get a bear, Umbra. Enchant creature for four, so you can give it plus two, plus two, and untap all lands you control when it attacks. Again, this one has the totem armor. Boon Satyr has flash. It's a four, two for three mana with bestow three and two forests. Enchanted creature gets plus four, plus two. A lot of rares in this one, I'm noticing. Seems pretty good deal. Creeping Renaissance for four, uh, not for four, for five. Sorcery, choose a permanent type. Return all cards of the chosen type from your graveyard to your hand. And this one has flashback for five and two planes, so you can cast it from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. Next up we have Eidolon of Blossoms. So this is a enchantment creature spirit, two, two for four mana with constellation. When it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Fairly straightforward. Enchantress's presence, enchantment for three. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. Epic proportions! This looks like an unstable thing. What do we have here? Some characters there. Looks like a goblin down there. Enchantment Aura for 6 with Flash, Enchant Creature, and Enchanted Creature gets plus 5, plus 5, and has Trample, and that's what they turn into, apparently. Ground Seal, so this is some card draw. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Herald of the Pantheon, Centaur Shaman, 2-2 two, two for 2 mana. Enchantment spells you cast cost 1 less to cast, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain 1 life. Spawning Grounds, so this one is enchanting a land and you can tap for a 5-5 green beast creature token with Trample. Oh, this is creepy. Cold Eyes, Silky, Merfolk Rogue with Island Walk, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw that many cards. Here we have another legendary creature, Daxos of Miletus. That's how I will continue to pronounce it. 2, 2, 4, 3 mana. Daxos of Miletus can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. Whenever Daxos of Miletus deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. And until end of turn, you may cast that card. And you may spend mana as well, or mana of any color to cast that spell. That's another mouthful. And is it my imagination, or are there more rares in this deck than any other? I'm pretty impressed by that. Hopefully makes up the increased cost of the decks. So this one, Elderwood Scion, 4-4 four, four for 5 mana, with Trample and Lifelink. And spells you cast that target it cost 2 less to cast. And spells your opponents cast that target it cost 2 more to cast. It's pretty good. Finest Hour. This is an enchantment. We really don't want to focus. What's it picking up there? Those guys in the background, I bet. Finest Hour is an enchantment for five with Exalted. So whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. 
Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap that creature after this phase. There's an additional combat phase. Holy moly. Righteous Authority Enchantment Aura. So you can give them plus one, plus one for each card in its controller's hand. And get to draw more cards. And that would be nice with a foil effect there. So that is the deck proper. Then let's sort out, we had this uh, planes issue here. And let's go like so. And I've really mixed things around. So basics. And I think it's, yeah, non-basics. So what do we get here? We get some planes. Islands and forests. I think there are a few less islands there. And we'll take a look at the tokens. So we get a mask token. So this is enchanting permanent, giving up totem armor like we talked about before. So you get a couple of those. What do we got? Uh, four, five of those. A cat token. An angel token. One, two, three, four of those. Okay, so that is our tokens. And then if we look at the non basics, we have a Mosswort bridge. So this has hideaway. This land enters the battlefield tapped when it does. Look at the top four cards of your library. XL1 face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library. You can tap it for a forest or pay a forest and tap. You may play the XL card without paying its mana cost if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater. We get a Forge of Heroes, Azorius Chancery, Blossoming Sands, Command Tower. This one seems to be fairly popular land just because you can get the mana you need in the correct color. Evolving Wilds. Crosan Verge, Meandering River, and another random plains just thrown in there. Put that aside. Seaside Citadel, Selesnya Sanctuary, Simic Growth Chamber, a Terramorphic Expanse, Thornwood Falls, Tranquil Quo Cove. Now I'm getting tongue tied. Tranquil Expanse. Woodland Stream, and an ad. Here are some popular magic formats. We looked at those before. So that is the Commander Adaptive Enchantment deck. Leave a note in the comments if this one looks interesting to you, if this is something you're planning to pick up. Although I can understand not if the increased price is a bit of a bother. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering unboxings. And be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Stay tuned. We've got more Commander 2018 unboxings coming tomorrow. And lots of other great stuff after that. Thanks for watching and have a great day.